Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to go over how we're going to use GPT-4 in order to generate the email copy so that all four emails in a sequence are uh, personalized. And so we're going to go over the copy first, and then we're going to go over to the clay table to talk about how we can actually build it. And so this is for a marketing agency. And so we're going to lead off with, hey, I noticed on LinkedIn that you recently started leading marketing at company name. This is if they've been there for less than a year. And I noticed on LinkedIn that you've been leading marketing at company name for years as the title gleaned by AI. Um, this is if they've been there for longer than a year. And so then we'll be like, I did some further digging on similar web and saw that companies like Competitor are taking some of the same digital real estate keywords and space your company ranks for. Uh, one of the very first things we do is we help like companies like Airbnb and Hotjar, and we help them execute custom marketing plans when they don't have the team bandwidth or expertise to do so. Would it be worth a chat for a company name? Awesome. Uh, then we're going to go back. We're going to do a little bit of creative ideas, outreach. So we'll say I was back on your site today and some marketing ideas for you, and then we'll go into this. And then I'll say, but of course, I wrote this without knowing anything about your current bottlenecks and goals. If it's interesting to you, we could hop on a call and I'd be sh uh, happy to share what's working in the industry. Uh, industry for other companies, especially in the harmonic keywords niche. We also might take that from LinkedIn. And then we'll send this email. I was just taking a look at your company profile, uh, all this information. And then we'll do uh, a pixel sentence talking about, hey, like I know that you're running ads or I know that you're not running ads. You'll see. And then we'll just end with this email here, which we I'll probably do a customization on the fly because I thought we had something here. Um, we might do something like... Um, is taking all your time. Uh, should I reach out to other person at company, not the same person? Um, because they uh, seem to be leading marketing as well, right? So we'll put that in. And would it be useful if I sent this over? Uh, nope, we don't need that. Great. So now we'll go to the clay table and talk about how we built all of these. So the first thing that we need is the uh, title and like when they started, right? So we see all of this data. This is all the clay table. We verified the emails, made sure that if we couldn't find a val valid email, we'll get another one over here. And we have a master email column. Here we're cleaning up the, the names. And then we're using this formula here. Well, actually, first, we've enriched the LinkedIn profile so that we could get all of the data on the LinkedIn profile. In Clay, we get their summary, all of their past experience. Somebody probably has more experience than that. See all of their past experiences, where they worked, what's their title, uh, the domain, is it current, all of these different things. And so what we'll do is we used an AI formula over here to see if the start date is from uh, less than a year ago. And so these are all false. Uh, and so then nobody would uh, fit for that criteria. So then we have uh, over here, we normalize the date because the output from their latest experience comes in at like 1986, 10.01, and I'm never going to reach out like that. So I want it to say October 1986. And so we normalized that. And then I cleaned their title using artificial intelligence. Um, I'm okay with this one saying founder and automation specialist. I wonder what they say. Um... Founder automation specialist. Yeah, I we we could improve this and I'll do this on the fly. Is so um, we basically say, hey, clean these job titles so they don't include useless information. These are the job titles to review. And we have all of these. And I'm just gonna put in founder automation specialist. And then we're gonna just train it down here so that when it says uh, founder automation specialist, it'll just say founder. And so then we'll train it like that. And then we just input, we'll say clean the title so they don't include useless information. These are the job titles to review. And then we only want this uh, to run if we have a title from their LinkedIn profile. So then we'll let that run. We want to see this one get fixed. I wonder if this will get chopped down too. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy that it did that. Hmm. I wonder what it's making do, it do that. Well, I could troubleshoot this. If you ever are getting incorrect uh, prompts out of artificial intelligence, you just need to keep messing with it until you get exactly what you want. Um, what I do like about this is they put founder, comma, automation specialist, at least now this is founder and automation specialist, looks a little bit better when you reach out to them. Then we have this formula here where uh, if 
basically I'm saying if new column contains false concatenate, I noticed on LinkedIn that you have been leading marketing at company name and since, and then the date and then the title. Um, or if this is true, which means that they've been at the company for less than a year, we're going to alternate the line. So see all these people haven't been there for a year. So now we're saying, I noticed on LinkedIn that you've been leading marketing at Deirdre J automation architect since March, 2009 as the founder and automation specialist. I noticed that you've been leading marketing at Ben Hansen architects since, oh, we don't have the input here. Interesting. So we'd have to remember that, uh, when we are sending all of this data to our sequencing tool. So anyway, that's how we would get through this first line here and get that either or. The way we're gonna get the competitor is I already said we got it from similar web. So we're gonna scrape similar web using Google searches. So uh, Google has built the world's greatest scraper uh, and you just need to get access to it. And so you can use the Google search uh, enrichment inside of Clay in order to tap into that. And so uh, this is what our Google search looks like. It's just site similarweb.com in URL, and then we have the normalized uh, title, and then we have competitors in there as well, so that it comes up in the snippet. And then if you look at the results here, we have the snippet down here as well. And so you'll see the first one is Clavio, which for Gong, it's not like totally a competitor, but that's why I hedged my bets. And I was like, look, like they're competing for the same keyword space that you are. Um, and then let's see here. Oh, okay. So now we've gotten through these emails and now we're into the creative ideas emails. If you've been following me and my other videos, I love doing this one where basically we'll take their company description and I train it and I give them, um, ideas. So basically we're saying, you know, using the input, create three marketing ideas based on the input, uh, which is a company description. There's a description keep the outputs under 15 words per bullet point and use keywords from the input to build creative ideas. And so then I literally just pass it like company descriptions as examples. And then what would I say if I saw those company descriptions, I put them right into here uh, inside of converse with ChatGPT inside of clay. And then it gives us pretty good outputs. So they're saying like do a social media challenge, a pay-per-click campaign, Facebook ads, all of this stuff so that we could fill out this section right here, which is super, super awesome. And then we'll keep moving on where then we have the uh, Facebook. Oh, so then we have the industry and then the harmonic keywords. So what I like, I like mentioning the industry because I feel like people, it's a nice touch. But if you reach out to somebody and you say you're in the marketing and advertising industry, I know you pulled that from LinkedIn. But then I want to add this niche thing here so that... Um, uh, so that they are like, oh, maybe they did look me up because it's often overlooked. And so we can go in a harmonic and we can take the niche keywords. Um, but then we also have the specialties from enriched companies. So that one didn't have it. But so like this one has the specialties, right? So architectural drawings, architectural renderings, like uh, all of these specialties would be good ones to name. So I just mapped the, the first one from there. And so then we could just have a merge column. And so we'll just go like zero one and then we'll go zero. So we're basically saying, you know, if this has data in it, I want that one. It, but if this is empty and this is uh, full, then we'll take that one. So you'll see like, we'll get marketing automation, restoration. We'll get nothing here. We'll get executive coaching here. We'll get our architectural drawings here. We're going to get service. And then here we're going to get B2B. So we'll just hit that. And then we can combine it all into just one sheet. So now we've completed this line and now we need to do this company pixel sentence. And so basically I want to be able to say, Hey, I looked at your website and saw that you have a Facebook pixel or, Hey, I looked at your website and I saw you don't have a Facebook pixel. You don't have a custom audience or anything like that. So the first way that we check for this is we use built with, and we're checking for all of these keywords in their technology profiles. Um, and we just want to know if any of those technologies exist. So then we have Facebook pixels here, and then we have a custom formula. So we're saying if new column is empty, concatenate, I use the built with Chrome extension and didn't see any custom audiences or pixel tracking on your site. Would you like to discuss your uh, current growth channels? I think we can change this to something better though. Um, but please take this video as advice on automation, not necessarily copywriting. Um, or if new column is not empty, concatenate. I used the built with Chrome extension and sorry, you're using some and then tech. I just wanted to make it sure that it would fit anyway. Um, how's it going running ads to acquire customers? Right. And so then you can see like for Facebook pixel, 
I use the builds with Chrome extension. So are you using Facebook tech, a pixel tech? How is it going running ads to acquire customers? And then if there's nothing, I use the builds with Chrome extension and didn't see any custom audiences or pixel tracking on your site. And so it just changes everything there. So now I guess I forgot to build into the workflow or do the copywriting for the fourth one. So this will be fun. I'll build it live on the video. So we'll say alternatively, alternatively, if working with companies taking all your time, should I reach out to other person uh, at the company, not this person, because they seem to be leading marketing as well. So the way we're going to do this is we'll use the find people integration. So we'll just hit find people. And so we'll hit this and we're just going to map the LinkedIn company URL right here. And then for job title keywords, I'm going to put um, like head of marketing. Well, actually, you know what? Yeah, we need to put like chief marketing officer, head of marketing. While I type this, I'm actually going to pause the video. So honestly, I just had ChatGPT come up with all of these titles. And so then we'll just check um, if they're there. And we don't really need locations. Um, and then, nope. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to do, we're going to pull all of these people. So let's, oh, of course there's no people at the company. Um, okay. So I'm just going to pause and fill out a company where this is definitely, uh, going to be true. Actually, let me see. Nope. Hang on. Okay. So now we've returned 10 profiles. And so what we basically need to do though, is we want to be 1000% sure that when we reach out to this person. And so we will, let's make an example. When we reach out to Kristen, right? So we'll, we'll put the name Kristen over there. I want to make sure that we're not reaching out to Kristen, right? I want to target like Laura, right? So what we're going to do is we'll say like, okay, this is the name. Uh, we don't actually, we only need a first name, but that's totally fine. And so now what we'll do is now that we have this name here, we're going to say, okay, this is the person we're reaching out to. If it double finds people, we we want that to not not be the case. And so now what we're going to do is we can map the first person's name and we can map the second person's name because it, you know, if the second person is the accidentally the person that we're already reaching out to, that's fine. We'll just take the first person and if uh you know, the first person is the person we're accidentally reaching out to. We'll just take the second person. And so now we'll just hit formula and I'll say, um, if uh, full name contains return the data from, um, or if first name does not contain this one, first name does not contain this one, return the data from name. Great. And we'll hit this formula just so that we're like a thousand percent sure. Write this out and it's not going to give it to us because this is 11. So wait, what the heck? Hmm. Let me just pause and fix this. Okay. So this took more time than I thought, but basically I just used a get keywords function on the column. And then I looked for first name, which is all the way at the beginning of the table over here. And so I basically said is first name in this name and then uh, then we get this output here of the keyword found. And then I basically just wrote, you know, if keywords found is not empty, output the name, which if it's not empty, that means we need the second person or if keyword is found, um, output the first person's name. And so then we got it. And so then we can even try this. We could say like Julia for number five, put this in here, Julia. Ooh. And then it's going to queue. And then, yeah, I just wanted to hit the top. So then see how we have this new column over here. So then this would be the person we'd reach out to. So now we'd be able to say, you know, uh, hey, should I reach out to, you know, Eric Nosowski because they seem to be leading marketing as well. Or we could also take, you know, their title and do something with artificial intelligence too, 
But uh, yeah, so this is the full workflow that you can use so that now you don't have to just only personalize the first email. You can personalize all of your follow-ups and make your cadences look a lot more human. Uh, so as always, uh, you can reach me on LinkedIn if you have any questions, and I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks very much.